right, so hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, if you can, let me know. I do apologize. Um, I thought I was getting sound feedback. Okay, so I, like I am now. It might, have, it might have cut off at some point. So I'm actually going to restart some of the things I said. So again, this Hangout is all about the you know, design, plastic, or, or metals in terms of smartphones. And we talked about that, and we're going to talk about some of the things that merits. I'm going to kind of do a quick catch-up here. Merits of, of one of the two, whether it's, you know, it's metal or plastic. And some of the devices that I mentioned on, on the side metal side, we'll start off with metal, is actually the HTC One. So this is the HTC One. I'm actually just going to tilt it away from my screen. It's an all-aluminum, uh, um, chisels for one piece of aluminum device here. So this is it. Uh, thank you very much, Lou. Much appreciated. I, I thought I was getting sound, I was getting sound feedback, but for some reason just didn't show. So, apologize for that, guys. Um, bring my mic a little closer. So anyway, here is the uh, HTC One. It's an all aluminum piece, and uh, is it's designed from one one single piece of aluminum. Now, a lot of people call this a very beautiful device, well-crafted, well sexy, whatever you want to call it, right? And the HTC One, yes, is a nice device. I mean, we're going to see that with all new HTC One, too. So, but what are the merits of this? Some people say that, you know, Samsung should go to this, right? But what are the merits and the disadvantages of having metal? Now, um, metal, uh, aluminum, or all these metal-type devices tend to have a more premium feel and finish. So they look more luxurious, they look more um, sexy, similar to say the iPhone 5. They have this very premium finish and look to it. And that's something that a lot of people like about these devices. Now um, with this device, you know, it's got a premium finish. You also have that, um, you know, just nice soft um, feel to it. The other aspect to this is on, on some of the disadvantages is that with most devices that are aluminum or metal, um, when you drop them, they actually do break easily. So they actually shatter, you have dents in the back of your phone, um, you have cracks, and we saw uh, cases with the HTC One where actually right here around the upper lip, uh, people complain about you know the separation and cracks. I'm not saying this is a bad phone, I'm just saying those are some of the things you will experience. You could also experience extra or heating issues because you have your battery placed next to a piece of metal and you know metal heats up and conducts heats very well so you could have heating issues with your device just because of its metal casing so those are kind of some of the benefits and, and demerits of the HTC One. Now you do have devices like and when I'm talking about plastics, plastics I kind of break them into two categories you have uh, they're both polycarbonate but you have what I call um, um, almost infused single polycabinet bills and of course you have you know separate modules so this is one example the Lumia 1020, the Lumia 1520, the whole Lumia line pretty much is part of that infused uh, one piece polycarbonate here so where you have one single piece all together that gives you a very nice solid finish now what uh, the benefits of this is that it's it's a very sturdy device you know I've dropped this I've dropped many Lumia devices not a scratch the other thing too is that because this is one full piece of polar cabinet, it's infused with the color. So whatever color you have, if you scratch this device, um, the color will still remain the same. Let me see if I can actually dim the lights a little bit, give you guys a better there we go, better look of the uh, the device here. So if you um, if you scratch this, um, it still would be yellow. Even though you see the scratch lines, it still be yellow underneath. So that's not a benefit, but uh, but the disadvantage is that they tend to be heavier. So these infused pieces tend to be heavier. Uh, they feel a little bulkier, they're not as light as you expect from um, a plastic device because basically polycarbonates are plastics. Um, so these are some of the disadvantages with it. Now, what most people are concerned about, of course, is, is devices like the Galaxy S, uh, S4 and the Galaxy S5. And the Galaxy S5 has a polycarbonate uh, build also, but the back cover is more of a flexible, more more a more thinner frame of color cabinet. And this is the original back cover of the S S3, I'm sorry, the Galaxy Note 3. And you see it's got this very flexible back cover because it's basically it's a plastic. Plastics have many tendencies and many attributes. So you see how flexible this is. You can actually um, you know remove the back cover. And that's another beauty again of having plastics. You can have removable back covers. You can't do that with metal because you don't have a metal casing you slide out and things like that. Now this is another back cover that we got from Samsung and this has it's it has very plus Finish. I wish they actually made more back covers like this and, and sold back covers like this. Um, this is the same thing. It's actually the same polycarbonate. It's just the coating finish is different on this. Now, the benefits you have from polycarbonates is that it's uh, it, 
or softer plastics like this. Like it's lighter, it's easier to handle. Also, you get to have removable back covers for people like me who want um, uh, expandable storage and also removable battery. Um, you get to access those with ease and not actually um, uh, worry about that. And also, um, they're more durable. Plastics are just more durable in general metals. If you drop them on the floor, they do bounce off, uh, more flexible, and um, they're easier to, to handle overall. So. Now we've seen both devices. The question here is, um, you know, what's best for the for the for the smartphone user, and what's best for people's uh, for what for people to use? So, you know, we've seen we heard the argument. Well, the Galaxy S5 um, design is something that um, most people just weren't too pleased about because of, you know, people said it's still plastic. We want to see more metal. But I think when we comes comes to Galaxy S5, I think most people confuse the fact that. The design itself hasn't changed that much. The material has evolved. Now it's gone from different levels of polycarbonates. And and I think it really begs the question what companies want to do with it in terms of design. So for instance, with HTC One, when you have that full um, you know, machined aluminum uh, finish, they wanted to go with something that gave them a very premium high-end look here. Uh, I'm just see if I can bring this closer without actually yeah, there we go. So they wanted something to give you that premium high-end finish on the smartphone where um, users can go, wow, I have this very nice looking phone and still have you know some, some weight to it and balance all together. So that's 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 that was the goal here. What what Samsung wanted to create was something that users felt was still a little premium because you still have that kind of um, um, chrome finish around and you've got the polycarbonate build together. The thing I think most people kind of miss is that the fact that the design language is still the same. It still looks the same. It looks like every Galaxy device looks the same. So that's the issue, not necessarily the plastic, because these guys, these guys are very flexible. You know, you, you can do this with plastic, you can bend it. I can actually do this to the Galaxy S5 back cover you know, I'm bending it there. I'm just going to replace the back cover I have. So this is the other back cover I have. I had a wireless charging plate behind it. Um, and I can just basically do, I can hold this for half the time and do that. Now, this is a different back cover. This is a little thicker coating, but still, I can bend it. This does. It's not as flexible as the other one. It's a little, just a little thicker coating. But see, it's still, still flexible. And that's the difference. And I think it's, it's that design language and what people are looking for that differs between both. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying that literally um, one one gives a different feel altogether. So I'm just going to increase my light there so my my uh, my webcam can focus. Uh, can focus. Then you have things like the like the Nokia's which have this you know very you know, I'm sure you could hear that very solid polycarbonate here. But I think they might be happy medium. And what I mean by happy medium is devices like the Lumia Icon, I think, uh, or even the 925. I don't have a 925 here. But the, the Lumia Icon brings some of that happy balance to users. So you have a device here with the Icon. This is the black Icon here, which has that same polycarbonate finish right here at the back. And it's not glossy. You know, It's more of a matte finish. But on the sides, and you can't see well the side. This is all metal. This is all metal on the sides, and it's really the same thing we even find with the S S five and Note. But the way Nokia actually has done this year is giving it that much more premium finish to the metal to to get, allow users, you know, feel that yeah, this is a more premium device. This is a device that when I hold in my hands, it feels like I spent a million bucks on here. And I think that's what people want. I think that's the whole idea. So, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts, guys, whoever's watching right now on, on what you think uh, it should be. Let me let me just go ahead and check out the, uh, the video page because I know half the time um, I don't usually get postings on here correctly since YouTube, you know, does things in a funny way. But um, so, yeah. So it's just one of the things to say, yeah, it's, it's, and again, I apologize, before I continue, I apologize for no sound at the very beginning, you know, um, I, I thought there was sound, so I apologize for that. Um, all right, so, yeah, no audio, where's the audio, we can't hear you, I apologize, guys, I'm really sorry about that, I really thought there was audio the whole time. So anyway, um, any questions, what do you guys think, what is your specific um, choice in smartphones, do you like metal? 
you know, do you like guys like the HTC One? Um, do you like uh, infused polycarbonates like the Lumia 1020, 1520? Or do you like, I mean, do you like plastic? I mean, do you like the uh, the Galaxy Notes, the Galaxy S, S3, S4, S5? Or, or are you looking for, for a hybrid, a device like this, like the Icon here, or the Lumia 925, that infuses both polycarbonate and, and some of that uh, metal finish for you? Uh, actually turn this device on so that you get the best of both worlds all together. Um, you know, let, let me know your thoughts because I think it's a very interesting thing because, um, uh, let's see, so Lou Rod says, I like the feel of my Nexus 5. I think I have a Nexus 5 somewhere. Uh, let me actually get to Nexus 5 and, and take a look at that. I mean, the Nexus 5 was a device that um, I think had um, a good feel in terms of finish to it. So why do you like the feel of your Nexus 5, Lou, while we... Uh, just, just let us know. Um, what are, what are the, some of the benefits you, you like from that? Because basically the Nexus 5 is a polycabinet device. You know, it's, it's not metal. Um, um, so here, here's the Nexus 5. Here's the Nexus 5, right? This is the white Nexus 5. So you've got the Nexus 5 front screen here. Uh, this is all plastic. Technically, this is called a plastic. Uh, and then you've got that polycabinet finish in the back. And it's it's got a nice matted finish here. It's white, so it's just blurring off the screen. So I apologize, but you know it's a Nexus logo here etched in uh, LG. The camera's out, so that's the finish of this device. It's it's nice, it's simple, um, but it's all it's basically all plastic, and it, it's you know again this is this is this is taking away from what Samsung has done and. And compared to 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 this as a as a device that's actually made out of plastic, and I think so, a lot of this has to do with the design language. I think the design of the device and how it actually looks and shaped shape really goes a long way in in almost defining what kind of material you want to use, or at least what level of materials you would like to use on the device. So I think you know that goes a long way with it. So I'm just going to set the, uh, the Nexus aside for a second uh, here, but. I think I think what most people what most people would uh, would agree on is that they you know there's certain devices for certain people. So for me personally, um, as much as the HTC One design is nice, I don't like metals on my phones. I'm I personally don't like the idea of dropping my device um, and it could either shatter, break, or dent. Uh, I've dropped many devices. Um, if, you know, even as I even review them, I just you know you're you're doing certain things and you know boop you know the device drops. And I like the fact that when you know plastic drops, plastic doesn't necessarily break. I mean you have to do something incredibly uh, massive to break plastic. So I like I like that fact. I'm trying to close my back cover here with the U.S. flag from the Sochi Olympics um, on here. But um, I do like I do like that personally. So Lou says. He came from the S3 to the Nexus 5. Feels the same for me, plus not too heavy. So, so for you, Lou, the jump was from the S3 to the uh, Nexus 5. And um, yeah, the S3 had a plastic back cover. Um, it wasn't as smooth um, as a feel finish as you have with the Nexus 5. But I kind of get you what your idea, you know, what you think here. Hey, so Warren, Warren's joined us here. How's it going, man? All right. Um, hold on a second. Let me. Is that is that light? Right behind me, or um, it's a little. Um, it's it's not too bad. I can, we can still see you clearly. Okay, good. I wasn't sure. I, yeah, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we, we basically we're just talking about some of the merits and uh, and disadvantages of having metal or plastic uh, on your device. And um, you know, I just kind of went through some of the devices that I have here: the HEC One. The Nokia's, the Galaxy S, uh, Note 3, even the Nexus 5, and um, and you know, just to give you a quick summary here. I was saying, look, when you have a metal phone, you you have that idea of premium finish because that's what most people will think. You know, that's that's a user preference. So so there's no there's no downside to that. You want to you know, I think I think a lot of people make the mistake of design and metal as the same thing. Yeah. Because I, yeah, I exactly. Agree with that. Because because you could have a metal phone that looks shitty. Let's just be frank, you know. And I think it, it, when it comes to your smartphone, if a company does a good job designing it well, then picking the material depends on whatever choice they want to make, you know, on that design. So, like I said, for the for instance, the HTC One, it's you know, design-wise, the phone is a well-designed phone. 
But for me personally, um, I don't like metal because, like I said, you know, you drop it, you get a dent on the phone, you, you could crack certain areas, things like that. You know, uh, on my on the side, I like the I like I like the Galaxy the Galaxy line of phones, right? You know, you've got that. I, I like it for this purpose. Like this is the back cover of the Note Three. Like I'm just holding the back cover of the Note Three, right? You know, you can't do this with metal, which means I can do this and I replace my back cover anytime. And which means you can also have replaceable back covers, removable yeah. battery. Because you, you know, think about it, right? You have a back cover for a metal phone. You're gonna have to slide it out in on a slight hinge, right? Yeah. You know, and that thing's gonna get stuck. There's, those are the disadvantages you get from there. Or even, even still, then you have things like the Nokia's, right? That have that solid poly cabinet, right? Mm -hmm. Which means the benefit here is that, yeah, this thing will drop on the floor and nothing's gonna happen to it. Pretty Almost. much. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, I mean, the the downside is that it's heavier. You know, it's, it's it's got more weight to it. But I always prefer the protection of my device over some flashiness because at the end of the day, you're paying six hundred dollars for this phone. You may not know it, but you are paying six hundred dollars for the phone <laughs> at the end of the day, or more. You know, so I I rather keep it longer as possible. You know, in there. So what, I just want to ask, what what are your thoughts? Um, as I've always said, it's my. Uh, tableish camera shaking there. Um, as I've always said, I've always felt that metal phones are are are, are a nice idea, but aren't necessarily practical in day to day usage of using a real phone. Um, you can go back to even to some days before they were even using plastic. Before we got smartphones, there were phones that were mostly made of some type of metal design or something like that, and they just didn't last as long. It cost more to produce them. It was harder to customize those. Um, and also, it has a lot to do with reception as well, too. The reception started to improve in a lot of cases when we went from all polycarbonate designs. And I think another problem is, is that people think they, they polycarbonate plastic. That is two completely different things when you're talking about plastic and polycarbonate. Plastic, everyone thinks it's just, you know, some cheap... Uh, um, Something that's plastic, something like a, like, a, like a well, this is actually not a great example, but you know, cover, or a um, or an Xbox con or a PS4 controller type plastic. That's completely different from what goes inside the phones. Yeah, I mean, it's true. I think I think the distinction there is that uh, okay, the general distinction polycabinet is part of the plastic family. Let's just put it that way, right? But they are grade levels. It's almost like it's like anything else, right? You know, the the polycabinet. It's cheap metal. It's cheap yeah, metal as well too. Because, for instance, this back cover is polycarbonate. This is yeah. also polycarbonate. But they, they are two different things. Oh, yeah, two very you different polycarbonate. You know, two very. See, this is this back cover basically is the flexible version of polycarbonate, right? Yeah. And this is not the flexible version of polycarbonate. So it has a range, which means it's a very flexible device to use. Which is why you see a lot of people using on smartphones because yeah. if you're trying to make your smartphone bend, curved, whatever. I mean, think about the LG G Flex, for instance, right? Yeah. There's no way you can make that curved screen on a metal phone. No. I mean, yeah, you no. you probably could. I'm sure there's an engineering way to go around it, but it's going to cost you so much more money. Yeah. And a hell of a long time uh, to do it. Yeah, I know. Tony Stark hasn't invented it yet. So. <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, even all the carbonate is in your phone cases are mostly designed yeah. out of this plastic stuff sort of the, the design. It, um, and it keeps your phone protected, protected right? Yeah, it definitely does. You know, I think it's funny. I always think it's funny, interesting that people complain sort of about plastic and phones more so than they complain about the fact that something yeah, that costs a whole lot more and you watch every single day is 90% plastic, and that is your television that you buy. You know, almost you, you, you're not going to find a TV out there that isn't majority plastic built. And why is that? Because they want because it's it's cheaper to produce. It lasts. And sometimes it even lasts longer than some of these metal um, uh, com compounds as well too. It's durable. If you bang it around a little bit, it ticks a little nick. It, it can it can it can it can keep on ticking a little bit. You can hang it on a wall, and it's gonna hang on there a lot better than metal is going to hang on there, where it could possibly fall off because it might be too heavy depending upon what it studs are on your wall. I'm just thinking like more hypothetical on a lot of those things, but yeah. you kind of get the idea of what I'm saying. I said people complain about that, but they spend two grand on um, on a TV. <laughs> if you're buying ten, okay, you're buying it for the screen, which is also made of plastic. <laughs> but um, the entire casing around it is majority plastic. 
Yeah, no, true. Um, Lou Rod had a couple of things. He he said he moved from the S. He said he loves his Nexus Five. He said he moved from the S three to the Nexus Five. So I asked him why. He said he loved the feel of the S three and he loved going just plastic or plastic. He said I played with the iPhone five. Uh, the iPhone never liked the way it felt. It felt like one good drop and you were out of your money. <laughs> and a lot of people were. A so, lot of that's 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 not that's not really. There's a it's lot. Not, of it's people, not a joke. I know. It's not right? a joke. There's a lot of people that I've seen iPhones smash right on uh, onto the concrete, and, and, and here in Boston we got concrete. Yeah, yeah. concrete and hills everywhere. Your your phone will not survive a drop around here if it's made out of a glass backing and all those things like that. Look, look. For example, you know, <clears throat> the iPhone is a great example of that. But then look at the cost behind the iPhone. Why they can't ever drop the the cost on that? Their build. Their 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 build probably costs are probably been the same since they changed because because they went for the plastic on the iPhone the first iPhone the iPhone 3G and the 3GS I think all the same build I think it's when they went to the iPhone 4 that they went sort of with this metal and all this other extra stuff on top of it I guarantee you their cost has probably either been exactly the same or minuscule less from the 4 to the 5S now. Mm-hmm. Than no, no, it was no, before no. with the original three and three G, uh, iPhone three G and three GS, which probably they made more money off of because it costs them a lot less to produce those. Yeah, and and, and that plays a big factor. I I told you people should you think they're not to care how much it costs a company to produce something. You really should because it it really determines on your the price you pay for it. Oh yeah, it does. It it go it goes a long way, and it goes a long way to to you getting that affordable. Smartphone, because if you look at the, the the flip side of it, right? We've been talking about premium smartphones, right? That we just talked about premium. Think about think about people trying to get entry level smartphones. You can't do that with metal. I mean, the reason why like the Lumia 520, right, and all those in the Moto G and all of them are like you know hundred dollars to about two hundred dollars unlocked is because first of all, build like you said, build is cheaper. It costs less to build the phone because you're using polycarbonates. You're using a cheaper material. I'm not saying it's a bad material. My mind just because it's cheaper doesn't mean it's bad. It's yeah, I think that, I think that's also I agree with that. Like some people think because it's plastic that means it's cheap, that means it's worse. Yeah. I think that's I think that comes from more of a uh, an uh, that, that that's more of an American concept than anything. No, I, I, I think yeah, I, I think it, 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 to a certain degree, but also they also have like the reason why I was even thinking about this. I started looking at like I looked at the headphone wall, and I, and I even and I'm 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 fault to this too because when I review headphones, I go you know if it's plastic, and I think what it is is that some companies just use the wrong types of polycarbonates. You know, the the headphones that are all all polycarbonate, and you're like, wow, this thing just feels very solid, right? And the some is you just shake them, <laughs> you shake it like this, right? And you're like, chuk -a -chuk -a -chuk -a -chuk -a -chuk. <laughs> and you're like, okay, all right, this is just some cheap plastic. And I think that's the problem because we, not just those headphones, but I'm saying like in general, there's so many materials in plastic that we use that feel so cheap that most people just kind of go, uh, I don't want a plastic, you know, I don't want a plastic device, like you know that that sounds or feels a little cheap, you know, and and and. You know, it's only to like you know. I think Samsung to me has done a very good job, especially moving forward. Even adding you know the the faux leather and the and I know you said and I agree with you here where they need to make this back cover more prevalent. Yeah. On on their devices because you know I think I think once people start feeling because the the, the truth about smartphones or is that it's in your hands ninety percent of the time, right? Mm -hmm. So you feel it, and yeah, you know. I agree. The HTC One feels very smooth because you hold it. It's that brushed aluminum, very smooth. You're like, okay, you know, I spent good money on this. Like that's the thought process. And then you hold a cheap, I don't know, say say like Galaxy S2 because I really can't even think of a device right now. You know, which yeah, that felt more like plastic. You know, because yeah. that was that was the early Samsung. You know, uh, uh, devices. That's where you go. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, you need to have a more premium build, but. Again, they're different types of plastics. They're different types of polycarbonates, and and do not confuse that with cheap, because even the cheaper polycarbonates, even to a large degree, have better durability than most metals in general. You know, um, we use plastic in everything part of our life. Sorry, go ahead. I, I, I think I just well, got you know, off. It's a simple science. It's like, what what has more give a reaction to when it falls? Is it going to be a piece of plastic or is it going to be a piece of metal? 
and metal's going to give a lot more weight to uh, the floor. I mean, the metal, I mean, plastic's going to give more weight to the floor, the ground, or anything than something that metal's going to do. Mm-hmm. I know, it's very true. Now, the other the question I was going to ask before, I think we, we, we should round up. And I do, again, apologize to anyone who's watching this later, because for some reason, for the first, like, Five minutes, my sound wasn't working, and, and people were watching, I guess. And then finally yeah. someone said, there's no audio. So, uh, Lou Rod, thanks for telling me the audio. So I was going to ask, all right, um, would, you, would you rather see devices move towards, like, the icon where you have that mix of, you know, polycarbonate and some metal finish around to give you that um, premium you know, pseudo premium feel. Is that is that something that you would like to, to see? I mean that's already happening now with the I mean the 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 S four did that. It had that metal trim around it and then the polycarbonate shell. The Note three does that with the metal. Yeah the Note no the Note the Note three does. But you see the thing is that a lot of people still say this is um full chrome. I think it's just the design itself. It doesn't give you that, you know mm, Mm, you know, oh, finish. Chrome. I've I've heard some people say that. I know it isn't. I know it isn't. I think I think what it is is, is <laughs> I think what it is is the design itself is not smooth. You know, it's a little like okay, whatever. So, but but you were saying, yeah, you, uh, you know, Samsung is doing that. Nokia is doing that. Do you prefer that more, or do you just you know, or you you rather see at least away from metal? Um. We have an all-metal essential phone here, which truly is an all-metal, by the way. There is plastic in the middle of the damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of Plus, it's the, it's the reverse. It's the reverse of you know. the reverse of that. But it's like even HTC themselves can't really make an all-metal phone truly all-metal phone this way because it's just I don't think it's practical and it's not it's not cost effective. And I and I think you need a mix of both some metals and some polycarbonate with it to create a nice feel on the phone. You know, I, I think that's just something that's, that's. I think it's just needed to be perfectly honest. And I think it's really something that's just needed. And when you're when you're making a smartphone, because I think you make it all metal, it's might it's probably at the end of the day, it's going to be too heavy for some people. And it's gonna the cost is going to be too high for some people. If you do make it all entirely plastic and they are all entirely um, uh, polycarbonate, it might not. It might you know be a turnoff to some people, but. I think in the end of the day, right now, I think phone by phone, I think it's a nice mix to have what the Icon has, what the S4 and Note 3 have. I think that's a good blend of both. I think when you go too far in one direction or the other, it is just, there's always a chance for complaints there. Okay. Oh yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, Lou Rod says, could that be the problem the iPhone 5C is having? Um, was he? I think he was referring to cheap plastic. Well, then the problem with the iPhone, no, they didn't use cheap plastic. He basically the same plastic that Nokia uses. The problem with the five C is just it's not priced very well. That's a whole different. That's a that's a um, um, different discussion oh, altogether. <laughs> that, that's that's a whole another issue coming out of their what they spent in cost to build and market the phone and what they're charging to try to make money off of it. Is really they they have a whole business idea behind it where they they where they where they're messed up on, and I, I think they thought they could enter into the into the um, emerging markets. I hate always calling them emerging markets. It's such weird name. It's always a weird naming for me. Emerging markets. A lot of these markets are really just low. They're just really about low cost phones because they basically buy phones outright, which is which is where the majority of these type of phones go to. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I, and the big thing was that you know um, um, Andrew mentioned in uh, this last weekend was you know the sales number in India, which is one of the places they were targeting heavily, uh, because of course they couldn't get into China in time. But the sales numbers in India are were atrocious. I mean, they've only sold three million according to reports. India has a population of one billion people. If you didn't dent that market, I mean, you should easily if you're going to introduce an iPhone. I'm not surprised by that because you know it, because that that I don't think that that's not a market that I, I, that's not a India is not a market that I think iOS is appealing to them. I think they're very more into the Android side of things, and they're probably more into the uh, it just Android and BlackBerry. I think are the two big things over there. Isn't BlackBerry pretty, still pretty big in India? 
No, Windows Phone is Windows Phone. Microsoft. Well, it's in Microsoft. India is Microsoft land. Let's call yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, well, Grant or Grant their CEO now, so that should probably help out a little bit more. No, with with with, with, but, with but, that yeah. market. But uh, I mean, you're saying um, Windows Phone. I was thinking of another market when I was thinking of BlackBerry, but um, Windows Phone and iOS. I'm not surprised. Those are two. Um, also, those are two heavily. Um, OSs that are also have huge um, interest for development in a, in a sense. Like I can see a lot of people that, are, especially a lot of people, a lot of people in in, in, those, in those in those countries are a lot of them are developers, a lot of interest in developing software. It's a yeah. pretty big thing for them, and Android makes sense in a lot of ways mm-hmm. for them to develop on. Windows, they're probably you know developing on the Windows platform, .NET, all those things. Things, yeah, and and, and, it, and plus, it makes plus, sense that plus the fact that they they're skewing Windows together now, where you're like, fine, if I make a Windows PC app, fuck it, yeah. it I have an app for everything now, right? Yeah, and, and that's a, that, that's a valid thought in, in a country like like that because of the cost of devices and the, and the fact that they'll buy one device and they're probably not going to have they're not going to have phone and computer like we have here. They they're going to have one device is probably going to do both, both, both of those things both, yeah. for, for them. I, I shouldn't say you know phone and computer. I should more say laptop and phone. Phone, they yeah. Probably, might, they might have a some type of PC at home, but but even, but even then, it's just like those markets. I don't picture ever. iOS does not seem like something that they would jump onto. It's a little too. It's a little too. First of all, there's a, there's a cost barrier in developing for it, because you need a, you basically need a Mac to develop on it, versus it's cheaper. You can make Android at Windows or whatever you want to make. And I think you still need a. I, I don't think they've made a SDK for. Wait, wait, you still need a Mac to develop an iOS? I, I believe you still do. Let me look that up, but I, I believe you still actually do. Wow. Hello. Oh, he's, he's Mike went to mute. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll put it on mute. I might be wrong on that. Let me look that up. Hold on. Hey, no worry. I'll, I'll, I'll keep talking here. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, some of the points there are interesting in terms of especially where that reach is and, you know, cost of smartphones. And I think it goes a long way, um, especially when you look at, you know, like I mentioned devices like the 520, the Moto G, um, just a hardware cost because if you want to make something more accessible, your hardware has to be as cheap as possible and still be functional. So you still have, that's why you go with polycarbonates, you know, plastics in general in there because you can definitely build hardware at a cheaper rate. Uh, and that's still at least a uh, level of quality in, in there, excuse me. And then, um, you know, of course, you can add whatever you want to do software-wise internally in, into your system. So, you know, plastics and polycarbonates are not a bad thing. I mean, I don't, think, I don't think they are. And I don't think metals are a bad thing. I think it's a, to a large degree, it's a matter of preference. But I think for me, I lean more to um, polycarbonates because I think as a material base, um, it's more flexible. Um, allows you to do different things with your devices. So um, devices that are polycarbonates, uh, for instance, you know, you have the LGG Flex, that flexible back cover, um, and also self-healing back cover. You can't self-heal on metal. Not possible. You can do that with polycarbonates because basically if you ever did organic chemistry in school, I did, uh, you could basically mess around with organic compounds and, 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 play with different traits and things like that. So if you, I mean, and that's what they, they've done with polycarbonates to make it. And that's why polycarbonates are so vast in our daily lives in so many aspects. So and yeah. It goes a long way. So yeah, Warren, you were saying. Confirmed. You definitely do. Yeah, I went to Apple's website. said, do you need a Mac to develop iOS apps to the App Store? Yes, you must have an Intel-based Mac running OS 10.8 Mountain Line or later to develop iOS apps for the App Store. So, And then the fees associated, it's a... Annual fee is $99, and local currency were available. The iOS Development Enterprise Program is an annual fee of $299, and local currencies were available. The iOS Development Risk Program is free. So there's already a cost barrier in even yeah. getting it to that. Wow, I, that, that's that's really interesting because, like... I mean, some I, people might say you could develop in Windows with confusing the term Windows and PC as one and the same thing, which which it isn't. I'm sure, I'm sure you can install a Hackintosh, which essentially means you can... You can develop on a PC, but everything's a PC technically. Even Macs are um, PCs. But I mean, couldn't you just virtual drive it? I guess you could, right? I don't. I don't think no, you. No, you can't. No, you can't. You, can't, you, know. you can't really. V, I don't think you can VM OS X. I think there's a hack way to do it, 
but not in direct way. But uh, yeah, yeah. okay. There's, 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 there's ways I've seen online when they said you can, and there's like, different little ways around it. But I went straight to Apple's website and just checked on to see what they said about development there. You still need a Mac to be able to develop on it. I actually remember this because my friend is developing an iOS iPad app. And he needed to get a new computer, and he went and got a because um, he does regular development too. But he went and got a uh, a Mac or Retina display because of the uh, the fact that he wanted to develop an iOS game. And okay. I don't remember correctly. Yeah, you do need that because I and, and and so that there, there there's a huge cost barrier right there, um, and 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 wanting to 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 um, get wow. into iOS. Wow. So basically, I, no wonder Apple's made money hand over fist because you do have to buy their product to make software for their product. That's beside the point. Let, let, let's, let's continue. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that, that's beside the point. But that uh, that's a direct effect on these smaller markets wanting to buy these operating systems because, yes, granted, you're going to have casual people that are going to want those things, but who's going to develop apps specific for that country? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because if you want, you know, what, you know, and, and we're using kind of, India as one example, but I'm no, saying India is a... I'll give you, I give you, I give you one example. I'll give you one example that's actually interesting. Um, some, I saw on Yahoo a post of, I'm from Nigeria, right? So I saw Yahoo a post on, on some Nigerian app that is, is, is taking, is taking the country by storm. You know, it's it's a fun app. It kind of, it's kind of like uh, they call it like the Nigerian version of Angry Birds. I can't remember the name of the app. So I basically just did a quick search afterwards to see where that app was actually going to be on. I thought it was going to be an Android, right? Pretty much. Yeah. It's actually on Nokia devices, Asha and Lumia devices. Wow. And the reason why is because it's off a Windows development platform. Um, and because I, I read the article and they showed, they showed, they said, you know, this, this guy said they, were, they, were, they wanted to move to Android because, you know, yes, Android is also a big part. But they said for them, because a lot of the Asher phones are cheap, a lot of people have those. So they had to get to that, you know. And then they're like, Lumia was the next step because um, to develop for Asher and move to Lumia was an easy process. Like anything in Windows really is not cheap. that hard. And it's, it's cheap. 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 I don't think you. I don't think there's a. I don't think you have to pay for the SDK for Windows. Oh. No, no, you don't. You don't have to pay for I it. Think, I don't. I, I don't. I, I think the barrier payment is only maybe when you enter the App Store. Or, I'm not sure what the. Yeah, you, no, you have. There's a registration fee, and I think is ninety. It's like ninety nine bucks, I think, or yeah, maybe so less. Maybe uh, less. I know. I know. They usually. I know. Last year they had like deals, like or registered to be a, in the developer registration for Windows Phone. They cut it down a lot too. Yeah. They try and get more, but. But you're right with that because I was really shocked. I'm reading the article and I'm thinking, I think it was Android, but yeah. I, I could see why they when they said you know Astro phones and I was like, all right, Astro phones are very cheap. A lot of people have them, you know, they they, they throw away smartphones out there. So you know, building for that and then Lumia's are also you know been doing very well in those markets too. So you're right, being that you know, and the next thing the developer said is like, okay, we're gonna do we're doing Astro and Lumia and then we're gonna go to Android. And he wasn't talking, and their company is doing well. And to do well in the smartphone market in Nigeria is rare. And they're doing very well because they, they have like a slew of games, about f maybe 30 games or so that a lot of people play. Is it, is it ad based revenue that they're, they're doing? Yeah, they have, they have ad based, they have ad raised revenue and they have buys too. So they have okay. like, um, they have like you purchase the games and things like that. So, so but the thing is that they, they're thinking of that, going from that, you know, from lowest entry. Um, you know, next middle entry to Android, which of course is just popular entry. You have to go into yeah. that. And they didn't talk about iOS, you know, because um, in their in their mindset, eh, it's you, who knows. I don't know what it is, but like you mentioned, the barrier of entry there is a little high. It's like, okay, fine, might as well just we we'll use the systems we have. We can make stuff for it and, and push it out there. And I think that affects, like you said, the barrier of entry, the cost of production of the device really affects. You know, uh, affects them in sales. You know, yeah. it affects the mentality of you buying. Absolutely, because I think it's a little bit misleading here in the United States the way apps are developed. Because uh, they show up on Apple and then they go down into the Android and all the things like that. But the, the reason that sort of happens that way because the barrier of entry is not mm, there <laughs> for America for, the, for people to come in here and go and develop iOS applications and develop Android applications either one after the other or at the same time. It's a little there's more options here. And, and plus you have two OSs that are flourishing very well. This isn't a this isn't a country where really everybody gets you know behind one particular platform or not. You have multiple 
platforms and, and uh, multiple operating systems out there. The free market pretty much decides on how it goes. Whoever you, however free it is, I know some people will complain and write posts and bullshit comments, but it, 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 it's what a free market is. It, 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 it's good and has its dirty side as well, too. <laughs> Do it in a lot of ways, but that's what it is. And, but yeah. um, th th those those things are there, and then capitalism and all that stuff will work its way into how things happen. And when you go to other countries, it's completely kind of different. Where if, if especially if you're not part of that one of those G20 countries, <laughs> it's really like whoever gets it in the cheapest first. <laughs> And no, no, it, it, no. It, it is, it is, it is it's quite interesting. You know, like I said, I can pick, I can speak from experience as being Nigerian and having, you know, family and friends. Is the fact yeah. that I remember I told you I said, you know, when I, I said like Windows Phone is doing very well in Nigeria. You're like, how? I was like, how I first noticed was I saw my cousins. They didn't ask me for cell phone advice. I'm not even sure if they watch my videos regularly. So who knows? Yeah. I mean, da data rates are expensive anyway, so I don't yeah. expect them to watch it. But you know, they're posting on Facebook. And, you know, Facebook, you post from mobile devices. It says post iPhone, post Android. You know, sometimes you even say post Samsung, if Samsung, you know, whatever it is. But it said post it from Windows Phone. So I was like, well, what phone do you have? So like, I have a Lumia 720. I'm like, really? It's like, yeah, I love my 720. And I have, because um, Nokia has a brand name there anyway. But, you know, then I started asking friends. And I asked my, one of my cousins. I called him up. I'm like, like, so what phones are they? like, yeah, you know, people want to get iPhones. But... And I was like, why? You know, a lot of people buy iPhones back home there as a fashion statement. It really is. Because the app store is very expensive. Like apps, like I kid you not, the Bible app there costs 10 bucks. I kid you not, Bible, which here in the States is free. Over there is 10 bucks. It, it's, it's expensive. Wow. It's a fashion statement over there, right? Mm. And, um, you know, to the point where, like, I, I sent my mom a Lumia and, you know, my mom, my mom has been using smartphones for a while. You know, she used Blackberries and all that stuff. But she loved she loved the Windows Phone just because it was easier for her to find everything. I I place everything in tiles and for all the she doesn't need much. You know, she needs to check uh, email, text message, and that's just she's not on Facebook. Thank God. So, <laughs> so so you know, I mean, but but that market is growing, and I I, I you know, and also Android is doing well there because Android has cheaper phones. The app entry is also cheaper, but iOS got there early and still hasn't grown. From from my anecdotal evidence of people I know, a lot of people say, well, yeah, the rich pe anyone who's rich has an iPhone, right? But the 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 people and that was the case before. But once Android got better, once Windows Phone came into to the play, most people were like, well, I can buy this Lumia for how much? And it costs what? And it does the same. Never mind. I'm done. I don't need. I don't need any more. And, course, and the only and one app everybody needs is WhatsApp, because that's the cheapest data rate app you can use back there. So you know it really cuts out the the use of it. And, and I think you know for Apple's case, you know we kind of drifted away from metal and plastic. Yeah. They they need to they need to figure out how they want to attack those kind of markets because you you literally have to redesign something different where it's cheaper for you to build than rather you make. You know the iPhone 5s, your your. But they still, but they still have to figure out development, and that is the key thing because unless you are going to go send people over there and develop in the countries for those particular applications, yeah, you, it's not going to take off. You, you 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 unless you create a program there, you get computers there, you get those things there, and you basically pay for it to happen, and then maybe those things to happen. Microsoft would be is willing to do that in some ways. And, and and create programs to get development to get things started and going because they know in the long run the payouts coming down in the end of the road whatever little money they spent on to make them to, to get people interested in the platform and getting started in development of the platform but that's um but that's I think that's going back to the whole iPhone 5c thing where this all really <laughs> started from it's it I, I think that's one of the main Issues with it not doing so well. Everyone says it's got cheap plastic. I, I think that absolutely has nothing to do with it. I know some people here in America that do have iPhone five Cs and they're plenty fine and plenty happy with it. Yeah, I, it's, I, it's I, the same build as a as a Lumia. The polycarbonate they use is actually pretty good. It's not like yeah. it's cheap. No, it's not cheap at all. I think it just comes from the fact that that's one of the problems that it's not cheap <laughs> at all, <laughs> and it's just you know if I'm gonna be in in India, and I'm using my phone, 
and I'm using my smartphones, where are my country apps that are, you know, for me, yeah. that, have, that are written in Farsi or, or, you know, I could be getting that wrong. But, like, but um, I'm in, you know, in whatever said country, if I'm in uh, uh, Nigeria. I don't know what Nigeria is native. I, 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 Just English, but English. Different, they're, they're, they're different native languages. Native so, languages yeah. around there. Who's going to develop for those specific specific areas, you know? You know, it, it, I'm thinking, like, you know, Countries like uh, Siberia and um, Southeast Asia, Southeast yeah, Asia yeah. that have different dialects of Russian going around in, in those in those in those places. Who's going to develop apps for those particular, you know, areas? You know, it's just like you know the guy that made Flappy Birds can't develop for every damn body. So <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's true, it's true. I mean, Apple has to deal with that, but I mean, I think just to round up the whole metal and plastic discussion is that. Hey, um, you know, metal has its benefits. You know, it does give you that premium feel to it, and and plastics do. Plastics have a benefit. Remember, like I said it's more flexible, um, it's more durable, and um, it, at the end of the day, plastics last longer. You know why? Because they actually do last longer. Plastic will take about a thousand years to disintegrate. I kid you not. That's yeah. why they tell us to recycle. Yeah, well, that's a good. That's why they tell you to recycle and. So, well, you know, that's why they when when you they trash things, plastics in the landfills, they sort them out and they disintegrate them the way that they do in the landfills because they'll last, like you said, forever. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah, they, they are benefits to I think I think what I think at the end of the day, most people need to realize that design language is different from material. Yeah, much <laughs> is much different from material. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Lou Roth. Thank you for mentioning the sound thing again. If you're watching this, I apologize. The first five minutes, I had no sound, or so so I apologize for that. And again, uh, Warren, thanks for uh, joining also um, into the the hangout. So guys, um, yeah, uh, check us out on YouTube. Uh, check Warren Bowman uh, at bw1.com. Uh, subscribe to his channel. Check out his videos. Uh, he's got some cool stuff. Uh, some nice long form videos. And also follow him on Twitter. That's his Twitter handle also. And uh, definitely check us out at Border Work uh, on YouTube. It's Border Work on Twitter. Is border work. It's uh, border work everywhere. On Twitch is border work. Uh, we'll try and stream some gameplay mm -hmm. at some point. Um, I, been, I, mean, I gotta jump on my Xbox One to check that out. I haven't even. Yeah, it, it actually, I haven't had a chance to really even look at Twitch or anything in the last couple it, of weeks. It's actually been not. It's, actually, it's a simple process. I just I, I streamed I think two videos, but then the third time I, I got kicked out for error from Twitch. But um, so far it's been. It's been fairly good. But anyway, guys, thank you very much. And uh, always enjoy entertainment. Peace.